Hello folks and a warm welcome back to my channel. Well, we're now at the end of May and we've had a run of a week or so of absolutely glorious weather with clear skies and stuff. And um, tonight's really my first chance to get out and stay out late. Um, because it's the end of May, we're only like three months away from the summer solstice. So it's not really gonna get dark here till oh, 11 o'clock or so, I would say. So um, yeah, I'm not at work tomorrow, haven't been at work today, so I'm not too knackered. Um, so it's an ideal opportunity for me to get out tonight. I've uh, been for a little spin on my bike today. It was lovely, not too far, because I didn't want to get too worn out. I still had a coffee and cake, which is all good stuff. And uh, tonight I'm going to use two rigs to make the most of the opportunity. The first is my go-to, more heavy-duty setup, the EQM35 mount with a um, Redcat 51 scope. And I'm also going to use my Star Adventurer mount along with the Asgar FMA135 scope to get a kind of wide field view. I haven't quite decided where I'm going to point that to yet. Uh, the main rig's probably going to target the iris nebula which is a, a nebula that i've never photographed before being honest i've got absolutely no idea how it's going to turn out tonight when the skies get very light we don't really get astronomical darkness here at all now um, i often struggle so um yeah i've got no idea what's going to happen tonight but um we'll have a go anyway so uh, all that's left now is for me to wait for the sun to set and uh, get set up. So I'll see you a bit later on. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video, then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with this video. So whilst it's been um, gloriously warm here today like 19 20 degrees or so once the sun goes down it's still um sufficiently early in the year that it gets cold very quickly i think it's um going to be about eight degrees or something by midnight here so um i've got the fire going to uh, keep me a little bit warm um sun will be going down soon i've decided i'm going to you definitely use my main rig to target the iris nebula which i've never photographed before this is a um, reflection nebula in the constellation cepheus and it should be sitting above my roof over there at something like half past 10 11 o'clock or so um, it's quite a bright nebula so it's a makes quite a good target for a small refractor so that will be quite good to to have a go at that and with my Star Adventurer rig, I will either take a wide field shot of the same area just to see what it's like, or else I'll hang it out a little bit later on when the Star Deneb will come up above my roof and do a widish field shot around there. Um, perhaps trying to get the Pelican Nebula and bits of the North American Nebula like the uh, the uh, Cygnus Wall for example but um, yeah I'm just sitting here now enjoying myself waiting for it to get dark and then I can uh, spot Polaris and get set up properly Don't want to sleep tonight at all Just want to watch them stars fall you don't want to try to make up dreams Just to be seen I want to lay here beside you Oh, quiet Fire breath and open sky It's not what we know It's where we go Choose to be Some flowers 
was high grass and bare feet Oh, but you each second is a treat hey, 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 I keep my balance next to you It's true Nowadays there's nothing Time for bed Well, welcome back, folks. It's uh, now the next day uh, in the afternoon, and I've processed the data that I took on the Iris Nebula last night. It was uh, quite a late night last night. I packed in at about 2 a.m., um, and in the end, I got about two hours worth just under of usable exposures. Um, I took 90 second exposures for each individual shot. I found when I pushed it to two minutes, 120 seconds, everything started to become very washed out because the sky is not sufficiently dark. So um, yeah, I settled on 90 second exposures and I wasn't really expecting very much at all. And um, much to my surprise when I processed them, it came out not too badly. I was uh, quite pleased because I'd looked at a single exposure and it wasn't that great. but. Um, what I was trying to get was the brown kind of dust clouds that surround the Iris Nebula, as well as the nebula itself. The nebula's a kind of bluey colour and it's a reflection nebula. So what it's basically doing is uh, reflecting the light from a, a star at its centre. And that came out sort of reasonably OK. What I hadn't expected to get was the brown dust clouds simply because I felt they'd probably just blend into the background sky and the best I was going to get was essentially a bit of black with no starlight shining through. So um, yeah, I was really quite delighted this morning when I ended up with um, uh, seeing the, the brown dust clouds around the nebula. I know there's loads of brown dust in that particular area of sky but to get more of it, I'd have to do way more exposure time, I think. So, um, yeah, overall, I was quite pleased with uh, what the Red Cat 51 did. I'll put the picture up in a minute. I hope you enjoy that. Um, I also took about an hour and a half's worth of exposures using the Ascar FMA 135 telescope stroke camera lens on the area of Deneb and immediately below it, which I'm hoping has picked out the North American Nebula and the Pelican Nebula. I haven't processed that yet and I'll put those results up um, in a, a subsequent video. So uh, yeah, for now I shall stick my image up of the Iris Nebula and if you've made it this far, thanks very much for watching. I hope you like the picture and I'll see you next time. Take care, cheerio.